Let me read it. Uh, today's scripture is Genesis chapter 1-1. Let me read it with a reverence. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. An anthem by the Shalom Choir and the Nisi Orchestra is next. Pastor Emeritus will deliver a message titled Genesis 4. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, all saints from the branch churches and the local sanctuaries, such as seen viewers and all children of God who attended the worship line. This is the first session on Genesis. Previously, I explained how original God became the God of Trinity. The original God exists, existed in a whole original universe in the form of the light that contained the sound. Then he cohered himself as one light at the vertex of the spiritual realm. Then he divided himself into three, who each one of them took on a spiritual man form. In this, it is in this way that the original God became God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit. They are an individual being. However, their spiritual forms are a little bit different from each other. However, the spirit in each remains that was separate from the same original one spirit. Therefore, all three of them share one heart and one thought. Their ability and the wisdom are also the same. And so we call God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit as a God the Trinity. I will now explain about the division of a spirit that God the Trinity performs. When people are really busy, they say, I wish I could have a clear myself. Haven't you ever thought that it would be good if you had a clear of yourself? If you could do it, how great it would be to do much more work. Moreover, if you have to multitask at the same time, the thought becomes increasingly intense. Thanks to the well-developed uh, communication technology, you are able to take care of many things on the computer. However, it's definitely less effective that you visited the location and taking care of them personally. For example, your parents, you live far from you, desperately want to see you. In the case, actually, visiting your parents is much happier things to them than you're giving them a calling. Maybe you'd like to clone yourself and let one of your part visit your parents if you could do. However, it's beyond the scope of a man's ability. That's why, in cases like this, people usually say, even though I cannot be there physically, my heart is always there. Unlike men, however, God the Trinity can send their spiritual form whenever, wherever their hearts go. Moreover, they can do it at the same time, anywhere, at any time, whenever they want. It is possible because God the Trinity can infinitely divide their spirits into many. Such things are beyond our human imagination, but it's possible to God. This division of God the Trinity Spirit is what I'm going to uh, talk about this lecture. Dear brother and sister, it was the inaugural division of the Spirit when God cohered and divided himself to three. The concept of the one light being divided into the three doesn't mean that one lump is divided into three pieces. It's more like creating two new lights from the original. You should correctly understand the first division of a spirit. Let's say you have a document with a stamped seal and you make two copies of it. 
Then you now have a two that are identical to the original one. But are the two copies as valuable as the original one? Even though the content is the same, their validities are different. It's because there's only one original copy with a seal. Even though the two copies may have the mark of the seal, they do not have any validity. However, when God the original divided into the God the tr- uh, Trinity, it was a more like uh, making two more identical clearings of the original one. It doesn't mean that two copies that no have a validity. In other words, the two more exact identical entities were made from the one original entity. That's why Philippine, uh, Philippians chapter 2, 6 says, He, the Lord, existed in the form of God. It says our Lord is from God Himself, forming of a God. It means that entity of the Jesus the Lord shares the same entity with the essence of the original God. It says the entity of God, the Holy Spirit. The occasion of the original God dividing into God the Trinity has taken place once for all time before uh, eternity and after all eternity. Dear brothers and sisters, the divide, uh, dividing of the spread is like a sharing the herd. The original God divided his herd, and the Puritch divided the herd in the form of the God, the Son, and of the God, the Holy Spirit. How can a herd that is divided from the God, the original, appear as the independent entity? Let's take an example of a man who can express what he has in his heart outwardly. When he has a hatred in his heart, he can express it through words, gestures, or actions. Despising or criticizing words, hard in the face, aggressive actions are such a means of expression. On the other contrary, if he loves someone, his hurt can also be revealed through the words, face, looks, or actions. He may confess his love in words, he may show the bright smiles, or he may hold the other's hands or hug them tenderly. Now, God can not only put what he has in his hurt into actions, but he can also put it into a sudden form. He can create a sudden physical things out of what he hovers in his heart. With this, God the origin divided God the Son and the God the Holy Spirit that have the perfect heart of the God the origin. From this moment on, God the origin became a God the Father. I explained that God the Son and the God the Holy Spirit were like a Son of God. have the perfect heart of the God the Father. Not only their heart, but their ability and the wisdom are also identical. Therefore, the ability that God the Father has, that is to divide the Spirit, is also equally given to God the Son and the God the Holy Spirit. God the Son and the God the Holy Spirit can also infinitely divide their Spirit as many as they please. However, here division is each God himself divided himself to many. However, the division of a spirit which is forming an identical copy of an entity from the original entity took place only once when God the origin divided into the God the Trinity. Please remember, God the origin becoming God the Trinity called the division of the spirit happened only once. However, The division of a spirit here means an infinite number of the divided entities of a spirit. This can be done by each in God the Trinity. Then can we create uh, creatures divide our spirit too? No, we can't. We sometimes experience our spirit as separate from our body, but our spirit cannot be divided. Human beings have a spirit, and the heavenly hosts and angels and even evil spirits are spiritual beings. 
A spiritual being refers to the being that has immoral attributes. The spiritual beings that belong to God, the heavenly hosts and angels, shine brightly. On the other hand, the evil spirits that belong to the darkness appear to be surrounded by the dark black smoke. When your spiritual eyes are opened, you can see that people who are possessed by the demons are surrounded by the dark smoke. Therefore, it is possible to discern that those who are possessed by the demons or influenced by the evil spirits, evil spirits appear to the surrounded by the black smoke. It's in this way there are spiritual beings, but they cannot perform the divine division of a spirit. It can be done only by God the Trinity. It's because only God the Trinity has the ability to give form to what He thinks in His heart. From now on, I'm going to give you detailed explanation on the division of a spirit that is done by each of God the Trinity. The division of a spirit that I will explain is to divide many spirits that resemble the heart of each of God the Trinity. God the Trinity accomplishes the division of a spirit and He sends His divided entity to where He is not to be. Say, God the Trinity wants to be in a certain place or to supervise with a certain purpose. Then, through the division of a spirit, the heart of a God becomes a divided entity and goes to the place on behalf of Himself. In the day of the Old Testament, God the Father Himself worked through the people of God. For example, in Genesis chapter 1-7, Genesis uh, chapter 26-2, Genesis chapter 26-24, the Lord appeared before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and talked to each of, each of them. These are the cases when a divided entity of the Father God, not God, the Father Himself, came to the earth. Of course, sometimes God the Father Himself came to the earth. For instance, Exodus chapter 19, 10-11 says, The Lord also said to Moses, Go to people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments, and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. That's right, the Israelites did not see God. Only Moses could see God. In this way, if you want to stand before God, you must be sanctified and become holy. We must diligently wash the linen and clean it before coming to God. Who do you stand in front of when you come to church? It is to stand before the God the Almighty. God is in the temple and is looking at you with eyes like a flames. So you must come with a clean heart and wear a neat suit. When you go to the wedding or a party, you wear a suit or you are dressed as the clothes. When going to church, you should have to dress neatly. The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes and prepare themselves to wait for the third day. So make everything ready and wait for the third day. For on the third day, I, the Lord, will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people, he said. 
And so the Israelites washed their garments for two days and sanctified themselves. Since the holiness of a herd is invisible to the eyes, washing clothes and the bath shows that one approaches God in purified. And if your herd is clean, your outward appearance will also be clean. Early on the third day, there was a thunder and a lightning flashing and a thick cloud covered the mountain. And Exodus chapter 19, 18 says, And now Mount Sinai was all in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and its smoke ascended like a smoke of the furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. When the region entity of the Lord God came down, special things like this took place. The Lord God showed only His back to the Moses as written in the Exodus chapter 33-23. The reason God didn't show His face is that, as written in Exodus chapter 33-20, no man can see God and the Lee. Because no man can see God and live, God showed His back to people, even to Moses, who was meeker than any other person on earth. As the original entity of the Lord God came to the earth, even Moses couldn't see His face. However, Moses could see the form of God the Father. Numbers chapter 12, 8 says, With him I speak mouth to mouth, even openly, and not in dark saying, and he beholds the form of the Lord. Moses was the humblest than all people on the earth, and he was faithful in God's whole house. And thus he could speak with the Lord God mouth to mouth, even openly. By the way, among God the Trinity, when God the Father works, the terms the Lord or the Lord God was used. It's a bit difficult because there are many different words and different meanings. Regardless of the original entity or divided entity, it was the case when the subject of the work was God the Father. There are too many unfortunate cases of a misunderstanding the Bible. God exists in, on His own. No one gave birth to God. He is simply He is. The same goes for the Lord, Jesus Christ, since the Lord is the very essence of a God. There cannot be a mother for the Lord. Could the Virgin Mary be His mother? Who gave birth to the Jesus? Father God gave birth to Jesus. But Virgin Mary is His mother? In the Bible, there is not a single place where the Lord calls the Virgin Mary mother. When the Lord was crucified, He told John that the Virgin Mary was now John's mother. At the time, John was next to her at the time. In other words, the Lord asked John to take care of a virgin Mary. The Lord always called her virgin Mary woman. The Virgin Mary cannot be the mother of the Lord in the Bible. On the part of her Lord's disciples, she is called the mother of the Lord, but the Lord never called her mother because she cannot be the Lord's mother. What is the mother? Only when a child is born with his or her mother's eggs, 
she became the child mother. The child father is the person who gave the child a sperm. The Lord was not born from the woman's egg, but was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was born only by using the body of the Virgin Mary. Therefore, the Lord does not have original sin because He was not born from the eggs and the sperm. He was born without origin sin. So the Lord satisfied the first condition of the Savior and did not commit any personal sins on this earth until He died on the cross. Because the Lord lived only according to the commitments of God and He neither original sin nor actual sin, only the blood of the Lord can atone for our sin. That is why the blood of the Lord is called the precious blood. If the Bible mentions God only, it means God the Trinity worked together. Genesis chapter 1 says, In the beginning God created heavens and the earth, and it's written that all the works of the creation in the Genesis chapter 1 was done by God. It's to indicate that the creation was not done by the Father, God, uh, God the Father alone, but uh, by God the Trinity together. Of course, it was God the Father who took the lead in creation. However, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit also accomplished the work of the creation along with God the Father. As s e e n in the chapter 1 of the Genesis, God said, After our image, that is, expresses our plural letter than singular, because the Trinity God conducted the creation. John chapter 1, 10 says, The Word was made through Him, who is Jesus Christ, God the Son, who came to the earth. It says, The Word was made through Him. Since God the Son also has the power of a creation, when He came to the earth as a Jesus, He manifested the many works of a creation. For example, without the power of a creation, reviving Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, could not have taken place. Think about the Lazarus. It has been the three days since the uh, burial, and the body is rocking and smelling. The Lord d o n e to raise a Lazarus from the dead. This means that all dead cells, nerve tissues, and the de- decayed flesh must be made anew. The Lord creates it. created his all organs new. Transcending space and time, anything is possible to the Lord to heal the patient with the power of creation by only his word. In addition, non-living things such as the wind and the waves obey the word of Jesus, and they also prove that Jesus was the creator. Likewise, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit accomplished the works of creation together with God the Father. However, Genesis chapter 2 4 says that this is account of the heaven and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heaven. Previously, the Bible says clearly that God the Trinity worked together on the creation. Then why does the Bible here say that the Lord God made the earth and the heaven? It's just a difference difference in the point of view. Genesis chapter 1 and 2 are not different. Genesis chapter 1 writes about the creation as God the Trinity being the subject, but chapter 2 as God the Father being the subject. This comes out differently depending on where the subject is described. 
It also implies that even though the creation was managed by the God the Trinity together, it was a God the Father who took the leading role. Say, three brothers established a company. They agreed that they shared the company equally and that they discussed the running of the company together, but that the eldest take the role of the CEO. Now, if someone asks the question, who owns this company? The answer, many vary, depending on the point of view of those giving the answers. Some may say all three brothers own the company, but others may say that company belongs to the eldest brother. Now, both those answers are correct. Since the three brothers are founded and have run the company together, the company belongs to all of them. However, since the eldest brother is the CEO, it can be said that it is his company as well. By the same token, it's true that the works of our creation were done by God the Trinity together. And it is also true that God the Father managed all the creation since he took the leading role. If you read the Bible remembering this fact, you can understand many things. You can also understand why the Bible uses this term God here, but the Lord God there. Besides, there are other terms in the Bible. There are the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the Lord. If such terms are used, then, then most of the time, it is the case when God or the Lord God walked through the divided entity. Then what is the difference between the Spirit of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Have you ever wondered why the Holy Spirit has a different names? If this can be clearly distinguished, it will be strength to the servants of God and the workers of the Lord. Some churches still pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit of God. However, the Holy Spirit is a title in the Old Testament, and the Holy Spirit is in the New Testament. We need to know why the name of the Holy Spirit is different in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We really needed to know right away. We now pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In this era, we must call God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Then I will explain later when the Holy Spirit was called the Spirit of God. Now, even when divided entities are working, their names are different, but according to their roles. In addition to the Spirit of the Lord, there are more names for the divided entity of God, the Father. There is a reason why each name is different when He is called the Heart of God, Spirit of God. They are the Spirit of Glory, as in 1 Peter 4.14, the Spirit of Wisdom, as in Exodus 28.3, the spirit of a judgment and the spirit of the burning, as in Isaiah chapter 4-4 and the seven spirits of a God, as in the Revelation. I will also explain about the role of each in great detail later. It may feel too difficult now, but I will let you know, let you know it step by step. So far, I've explained how God the Father works as in the form of the divided entity. Dear brothers and sisters, not only God the Father, but God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are also able to perform the division of a spirit that allows for a separation of the 
infinite number of the divided entities. Now, let's take a look how God the Son works through the divided entities. God the Son also has His own original entity. Through the division of a spirit, He also sends His divided entity where He wants to be. Since God the Son came to this earth as a Jesus and became a Christ, we call God the Son the Lord. Therefore, if the Bible uses the term the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of Christ, or the Spirit of Jesus, it's good to say that these terms are used to refer to a divided entity of the Lord. In addition, the Spirit of the Holiness, as the Romans chapter 1-4, is also a divided entity of the Lord. According to the situation and the role at that given moment, the name of the divided entity becomes different. How helpful will it be if you know these things and read the Bible? All the divided entities of the Lord resemble the original entity of the Lord exactly. However, those who have a spiritual eyes can sometimes see the Lord hung on the cross or the Lord wearing a crown of a throne. The Lord accomplishes the division of a spirit in order to give a special grace and understanding according to the situation. If he divided his spirit while thinking in his heart of the moment when he was suffering on the cross, the divided entity appeared with that look. If you can remember this kind of a division of the spirit of the Lord, you can understand many things from the Bible. For example, in Matthew chapter 18, 20, Jesus said, For where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. Even at this moment on the earth, there may be many places where people gather in the name of the Lord, uh, name of the Jesus Christ. How many places of worship are there in this world? There are also many places where two or three people gather to pray in the name of the Lord. The Lord clearly says that where two or three gather together in my name, there uh, am I among them. When you two or three gather together to pray, who will come? It's one of His Spirit that He, Lord, divide Himself to. Even at this very moment, there are probably many places where two or three people are gathered together in the praying in the name of the Lord. It may be well over the thousands or tens of thousands. How can the Lord be in such many places? Through the division of a spirit, the divided ent- entities of the Lord can be everywhere all at the same time. The original entity of the Lord is in heaven. In this way, one of the divided entities of the Lord stays where the Lord's h e a r t goes. If what the Bible says is true, the Lord Himself will not go everywhere in person. Since there is only one Lord, His original entity, how can He be in so many places at the same time? That's why He sent His divided entities. And they are totally the same with the Lord when your spiritual eyes are open. The Lord is in heaven, and His divided entities work s in this way. The time that the Lord's origin entity will come down to the earth is when the millennium kingdom begins. The Lord's origin entity of the Lord will descend in the air, and after seven years' wedding feast, He will come to the earth when beginning of the millennium kingdom. Do you know what I mean? When he comes down to the, this earth before this, it's a divided entity of the Lord. Now, how will the Lord go to the old places where people gather in the name of the Lord and be with them? Let's say a couple of people gather in the name of the Lord and give a worship service or praise together. It will be reported to the Lord by angels. As the Lord looks down at the praying people, He becomes delighted. It's because they worship in spirit and the truth, pray proper, uh, properly according to will of the Lord, and sing praise to the Lord from the depth of their hearts. 
then the Lord comes to have a thought in his heart. I want to be with them. Then such a heart of the Lord becomes a divided entity that is in the same form of the Lord and goes to the place. Let's say two or three of you are gathered together to pray and praise, but the Lord may or may not be with you. The Lord will be with you only when you believe in and fear God, believe in and fear our Lord, and pray and praise Him. Even if more than 100 of you gather, if the praise and the prayers are not offered with a faith and a love, but are done with a fleshly thought and a heart, the Lord is not with you. He will be with you when you truly fear, praise, and pray to God and the Lord from your inner heart. In this way, the Lord can be in the midst of the where people gather in the name of the Lord. It's done exactly according to the Bible. Jesus didn't say, meaning for it to be a figure of a speech. An actual entity divided outcome uh, from the Lord proceeds from Him. Where the Lord puts His heart, the Lord can be with us in spirit no matter where it is. The Spirit of the Lord will be with the people as a proper aid, a given answer to them, as well as a blessing. He works for those who need to repent so that they can repent. The Lord is searching over the earth from heaven even at this moment. No matter where the person may be who desperately search and honestly seek the Lord, the Lord sends His Spirit there to the person. However, the Lord does not join the presence with the people just because they gather together and ask the Lord to be with, it, with them. When those who truly love the Lord gather together with a uh, unified and the longing heart for the Lord and the seek for the Lord, the Lord is with them in spirit. If you pray with all your heart and attend the meeting, God will answer to you prayer so quickly. Another example of the Lord's division of a spirit is found in Mark chapter 16, 20. It says, And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord walked with them and comforted the world by the sign that followed. After the resurrection of the Lord, the disciples that were remaining diligently preached the gospel. At this time, the Lord was with them and confirmed the gospel is true by the showing signs. This moment, the Spirit of the Lord, which is a divided entity of the Lord, was with His disciples. Even though it was a divided entity, as the Spirit of the Lord was together, signs also followed like this. When signs follow, the definitely outstanding work also follow. The lame come to walk, the blind come to see, and the deaf come to hear. But there is a clue here. When you believe with your heart, the Lord also worked when the needed believe in Him. When Peter lifted up the lame man and when the Lord lifted up the paralysis, Uh, paralytics, the friends of the patient believe in him and carry the patient on a stretcher. He saw their faith and the work. The doubter asks, why doesn't it work for me? But the Lord sees your faith and the works. So, so the Lord showed the people evidence and testified his words so that they could believe. As the Spirit of the Lord is together with them, such as signs and the wonders followed, and the various works of God, the power, are also manifested. Let me wrap it up today. I will explain about the division of the Holy Spirit from next time. Let us pray that we will keep today's words in mind. Amen. We receive the pastor emeritus. Pray for the second video. Place your hands on the ill or weak parts of your body. And if you're not sick, place your hands on your chest to receive the answer by faith. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works and descend the time and the space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in the branch churches and the local sanctuaries and all of the children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from the hurt, drive away negative thought and the doubts, all tests and trials. From head to toe, all organs, joints and nerves, the tissues and cells, so whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the whole regional light. In the name of the Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and the Satan, all diseases, germs, and the viruses and uh, infirmities go away, light come. Please scorch all their incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All infectious diseases, including the cold, flu, and the fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and the viruses. Heal them all, heal them of all stomach, lung, the river, breast, the urine, and the intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral stroke, high and blo- uh, low blood pressure, diabetes, a thyroid problem, and the heart, lungs, and the women's disease, and the inflammations go away. Heal them of a polio, stroke, arthritis, and uh, herniated disc, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all of the pains that disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened. Get up, the walk, and leap. Let the eyes see, let the ears hear, let the blind come see, the deaf hear, and the mute speak. Heal them all after effect of all kinds of accidents. Fix their broke bones. Restore them from burns. Let the heat and the burning sensation go away. Father, please have all skin be intact. Be, be cleansed from the all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and the substance abuse. Let the dead nerves, the tissues, and the cells be regenerated, bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessing of a conception. In the name of the Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places, and their servant go away. Go away, evil, unclean, the force, and the d i s c i p l e spirit is something alienating and the all forces of a darkness. Loosen the bond of the weakness, the darkness, go away, light, calm. Father God, give them strength to cry out in the prayer and the power to cast off a sins and become a sanctified. As their souls are prosper, let all things go well with them, and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and the disasters through this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit, the heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, their workplaces, and the business field. Please let students have a wisdom and a smartness and have them be willing to study with a f a v o r Please do not let them lose their heart to worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink, and whatever they do, let them live a life glorifying to you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I've been mad and I experienced God and I received His answers and the blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.